Hello my dear friends, you are in the middle of the summer channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 29th of September of 2023. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates so let's start. And first we are going to start with Kherson direction as usually those days. The Russians continue bombing and attacking the Ukrainians in the settlements like Lvov, Kazatska, like Bargunka, like Berislav and so on. And according to information we have, according to sources we have, the Ukrainians continue attempts to concentrate their forces exactly in this on this bank of, of Dnipro river the Russians see everything and this is the reason why the Russians continue attacking the Ukrainian positions if you ask my opinion I don't see any like um, res value from this operation from Ukrainian side the only possible thing that Ukrainians wants to achieve by this concentration is to force the Russians to keep their reserves uh, exactly on the opposite bank of the river but currently the Russians uh, have enough of air force air power to uh, attack the concentration of ukrainians in this direction now we're moving to zaporozhye area and today we got also some updates from this territory and the most important updates currently is are that the ukrainians during the previous days made significant um, attempts to attack the russian positions in the vicinity and in direction of Kopany. As we discussed, this operation is too late operation. We can say that I don't think that Ukrainians have chances to complete this mission successfully. Uh, they need to develop their, let's say, the western flank of Rabozna before further offensive operation in direction of Novoprokopovka Verbova. The Russians controlled the entire situation and during the day the Russians made significant number of FPV drone strikes. The Ukrainians were using the same tactics as they were using when they were moving to Novoprokopovka and Verbova. First, the Ukrainians were sending significant number of infantry and two or three groups who were moving from one tree to another. The Russians saw everything and as soon as the Russians discovered this or that platoon of Ukrainian forces, the Russians attacked them immediately. Obviously, the Ukrainians probably were pretty successful using this tactic. They managed to dig in deeper in direction of Kopony using small squads and small platoons and maybe they managed to capture a few trenches. But when talking about the current geolocations were received that most of the Ukrainian movements took place exactly on the edge positions between on the edge combat line between the Russians and the Ukrainians. We haven't received nothing from let's say the territory that is colored by red color which means that the Ukrainians probably managed to maintain the growth zone to get as close as, to get as, close as possible to the Russians but they still haven't managed to cross this combat line in this direction. When talking about Verbova and the Ukrainians also used the same tactic as they used when attacking Rabotina and many, many other cities like in Urajain, uh, Staromayorska. And you know that, uh, yes, it's very important to notice that the Ukrainians, when talking about Virbova, tried to use the same tactics as the Ukrainians were using in uh, Vremivka tactical bridgehead. As soon as they got very close to the city, the Ukrainians started attacking and bombing the Virbova using FPV drones. Uh, they managed to concentrate a lot of FPV platoons, FPV operators. In this direction, currently they try to establish complete fire control, FPV control over the main supply roads, over the main positions of the Russians. And the only thing the Ukrainians try to do is to attack every single second at this or that Russian position. Of course, this will allow them to reduce the Russian forces, to pin them down, and after that they will be able to continue their offensive operation and they will be able to make another attempt to storm the western part of the city and basically to enter this area. Because yet the Ukrainians um, haven't uh, managed to do this and they were pretty unsuccessful during the previous attempts of uh, the same attacks. Now we are moving to Vremivka tactical bridgehead. We are going to talk about South Donetsk direction. First, we are going to start with this area. Uh, today we got updates that uh, the Russians uh, launched a small counter-offensive operation in direction of in the vicinity of Priyutina, and the Russians were heading to the north. Some sources were saying that the Russians are planning to counterattack, to return their lost positions and so on. But I don't think so. I think that the Russians uh, have uh, completely different purposes. Uh, uh, when talking about area a little bit to the north, this area is completely concentrated with the Ukrainians. And the Russians were attacking and bombing these territories heavily using all types of weapons they have. And the thing is that um, the Russians probably expect the Ukrainian offensive operation in the direction of Priyutina and 
and the Russians also used the same tactics as they were using during the previous battles for different settlements and towns and the main purpose of this tactic is as soon as the Russians find out that Ukrainians are going to attack usually the Russians try to maintain the gray zone and to get as close as possible to the Ukrainian position so basically the Russians just maintain the gray zone and uh, and this the, pur the main purpose of these tactics is to be ready much earlier in comparison with regular attack against the Russian position. So this that's it, nothing more. So I expect that within the next um, few days the Ukrainians will try to attack Pryutina and they will try to capture the city from many directions. So we'll see whether uh, my projections are going to come true. Now we are moving further to the eastern flank of uh, Mokre Yare, uh, Yare River. Today the, either the Russians and the Ukrainians published some videos and first video we'll let's discuss from Novomayorska. Uh, the uh, Ukrainian sources published the video how they were bombing and attacking the Russian forces in the northern part of the city, which confirms that as a result of counterattack, the Russians managed to restore complete control over the city and the Ukrainians were forced to step back very far to the north. When talking about Novodonetsk, the Russian sources published the video how they were bombing and attacking the Ukrainian positions along this tree line, which also confirms that Ukrainians were forced to step back, but not so far. And basically, the Ukrainians located right in front of the city and from these positions I believe the Ukrainians do have possibility to control the territory of Novodonetsk and basically they are very close which also means that the Ukrainians maintain the grey zone and probably will try to attack Novodonetsk one more time also within the next few days or even hours. Now we are moving to the most important area, according to my understanding of the situation, to the South Donetsk direction. First, we are going to start with last priority city with Uglidar. Today, the Russians continue bombing and attacking this city with uh, FAP 500 and FAP 1500. As you can see, as a result of one of those strikes, there was a very heavy explosion. And um, we can make a few con conclusions from this video. And the most important one is that there are still a lot of correct buildings buildings and uh, that the Ukrainians can use as a strongholds and basically currently at this moment the Russians don't have chances to storm the city and to capture the city by storming in front because there are still a lot of buildings and the Ukrainians are going to fight for every single one. So the only possible solution to capture Uglidar is to encircle this area but if the Russians want to encircle this area obviously they need to improve and improve their positions and increase the pressure in direction of Novomikhailovka Konstantinivka. This is the only solution for the Russians. The Russians obviously know this and this this is the reason why the Russians continue today their offensive operation and storming operation on the north of Novomikhailovka and, and Paraskovivka and Konstantinovka. Today the Russian sources published another video how they were attacking and storming the Ukrainian trenches, the Ukrainian stronghold in the fields. And on this video we see how the Russian tank was running along the open air and, uh, in the fields, among the fields, and he was attacking the Ukrainian positions in this forest line, in this forest area. This is a very important video and we can make lots of conclusions based on that. First of all, and which surprised me most of all, is that the Russian tank had possibility to attack this area. He made significant number of strikes, probably 20 uh, rounds um, uh, was uh, launched in direction of Ukrainian positions and basically the Ukrainians were completely destroyed in those trenches and those strongholds. And after that the Russian tank left this area without even being wounded or attacked by the Ukrainian forces. What does it mean? First of all, that means that Ukrainian forces that located in this forest line are encircled and they can't evacuate from this territory and also they don't have possibilities to send some reserves and reinforcements in this direction. The second important conclusion that we can make is that the Russian tank was moving in this area and he was making this uh, number 8, uh, this uh, sign of 8, uh, like very long time and I expected, if the Ukrainians had everything fine in this direction, I expected that from this defense line the Ukrainians would attack this tank with anti-tank missiles. But for some reason the Ukrainians didn't attack the Russians, so uh, that means that Either the Ukrainians don't control this territory and this area is in the gray zone and the second reason is that the Ukrainians didn't have possibilities, they didn't have ammo or maybe anti-tank weapons. So that's why they, they were just sitting in the trenches and the tree lines and watching how the Russian tank were attacking the Ukrainian positions. 
I'll remind you that just yesterday we discussed another video in the same direction, how the Russians were demining this area and uh, third, after the finished demining process, they sent kamikaze tank and that kamikaze tank made a very heavy explosion and as a result of that explosion probably some mine fields were cleared or something like this. And this event took place a little bit to the south, so this is the reason I took a decision to change this map and currently this into all these fields is in the gray zone and I expect that within a day or two or within hours or maybe the Russians have already established control over these uh, three lines and they will continue pressure to the south in direction of Novomikhailovka. While the Russian tank were making number eight among these fields, uh, the Russian air forces and artillery forces were bombing and attacking Novomikhailovka, trying to pin the, down the Ukrainian forces there and not to allow the Ukrainians to send the reinforcements, reserves and probably anti-tank weapon to the north uh, with one purpose to slow down and stop the Russians. So we see almost absence of any resistance from the Ukrainian side in this direction. This is one conclusion that we, could, we can make. And the second one is that the Russians are very, very careful in this direction. They're moving very slow. They're using a very small amount of forces to attack. And basically we see that uh, some character of Russian attack and this is something new that we haven't seen when talking about Russian tactics, something new that we haven't seen on any other front line. Very slow, very accurate, step by step, very professional, demanding process, kamikaze attack, uh, tank attack, then and probably after all these things the Russians will launch a very powerful attack with troopers with storm squads and uh, the main purpose of the next phase of attack is to get another defense belt that located right in front of Novomikhailovka and then from this direction of course there were going to be no chances for the Ukrainians in Novomikhailovka to hold these positions for a very long time. Furthermore during those all those attacks and all those attempts to storm the city the Russians were bombing and attacking the Ukrainian positions in Kurahova. This is a very important area the, Rus the Ukrainians used this territory uh, Kurahova, the city, as the main logistic hub, as the main um, like command center hub, as the main concentration of forces. So this is the heart of South Donetsk operation. A lot of front lines. Zaporozhye is the main. The heart of Zaporozhye is Areha from Ukrainian side. Vremyevka tactical bridgehead is Vesely Novoselovka. South Donetsk. The heart of this operation is um, Kurahova. Donetsk direction. The heart of this operation is Avdeevka and Konstantinovka. Um, Liman direction is Liman and Siversk and many many most important cities. So and the Russians continue bombing this area and this is not the first attack during September. Since the beginning of this September the Russians made a lot of strikes in this area a few days ago. On the 22nd of September, the Russians reported that they destroyed command center or probably local headquarters in this area. And as a result of that attack, up to 40 officers were killed and there was one uh, head of... Uh, headquarters were died, killed and one uh, deputy commander in this area as well. Furthermore, I'll remind you that just a few days ago the Russians managed to discover the Ukrainian positions in Stepanovka. That was the first concentration of forces of 79 Air Assault Brigade and as a result of artillery strikes. The Russians managed also to destroy some armored vehicles and unknown number of personnel in this direction. So the Russians are over concentrated. This is the primary sector, primary direction for the Russians and I expect even even bigger intensifying of action in direction of Novoselovka and Kurahova. Now we're moving to the north to Bakhmut Artyomov's direction, basically to Artyomov's direction. And today we got a very interesting update, probably one of the most important updates of today. And we are going to talk about the city by the name of Vesele, Vesele, this one. The city that located between Razdolovka, Yakovlika, Belogorovka, Beristova. One of the most important strongholds on this direction. Uh, this area used to be under protection and responsibilities of 10th Mountain Assault Brigade, a very powerful brigade, which uh, this brigade made a lot of problems to the Russians during this year. Uh, they made significant number of FPV drones at, uh, strikes against the Russian positions in Belogorovka, Beristova. And today some Russian sources reported that, not Russian sources, let's say pro-Russian or pro-Wagner, I believe you know this source, uh, Remy Lind, uh, he 
um, uh, he says uh, that he's very close to Wagner and he has some insight from their side and according to him uh, Wagner's and uh, uh, marine forces, VDV forces, managed to capture the city and to force the Ukrainians to step back. Also, the same source confirmed that the, the Russians managed to uh, develop their positions and uh, their progress in the vicinity of in the Areha Vasilivka and along Areha Vasilivka further in the direction of Minkovka and Privilia. Yet, we still haven't received even a single confirmation of that, but the same story we had with Areha Vasilivka. The Russians reported about some progress in the city a week ago, uh, 10 days ago, and just yesterday we got the first geolocation how the Russian soldier was moving along the first buildings on the edge of the city. The same story started with Vesselia. Probably this is the first confirmation of the fall of the city obviously the next night if it's true of course if it's true the upcoming night of the local time the ukrainians will launch a counter offensives try not to allow the russians to dig in deeper and if the russians are able to hold this territory and not to allow the ukrainians to counter attack then this is going to be significant loss for the ukrainians because if the russians are able to capture visola obviously they're getting operational square and from these positions the russians will be able to continue their offensive operation along the railways in the in direction of Vuyimka. The Russians will be able to move along the fields, among the fields in direction of Siversk and of course the Russians will be able to attack Razdolovka. So basically this is might be the beginning of the greatest Russian offensive operation in direction of Siversk. When talking about the northern flank of Siversk today we got also a lot of updates from this direction. The Russians after a very long operational pause from, from this area published the first videos of the use of FAP 500 in this direction. Uh, the Russians started bombing and attacking the concentration of Ukrainian forces, their ammo depots, their fuel depots, their uh, ammo, uh, their armored vehicles, not just with FAP bombs but also with uh, regular um, multi launch rocket systems. On this video, we see how the Russians were attacking the Ukrainians on the edge of Tarskoya. So, uh, this, uh, these two attacks can mean, mean a lot of just as regular attacks. And from the other side, uh, these attacks might be something like artillery preparation before the very big attack, because uh, we discussed a lot this area and there are very high chances that the next target Wagner's will try to capture is Sivers, because more sources confirm that when talking about Wagner's, that they operates exactly on Sivers Liman direction. And this is their main priority uh, and main target in this phase of special military operation. So, uh, if you ask my opinion, something tells me that the battle for Siversk has started exactly today. So, we'll see what is going to be next. And when talking about Artyomovsk itself, there are no changes on the ground, just regular military routine, artillery duels, and uh, with many losses among the manpower from both sides, but without any progress on the ground also for both sides. When talking about Kupens Liman frontline, there are no changes on the ground, just a few geolocations and nothing more. And that's it for today. Military Summary Channel reminds to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes, join my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.